I'm Madge of MadgeSkew.com, and today we're going to clean your brushes. Here we have a dirty brush, and we've just finished painting. So the first thing that we're going to do, um, and this is an optional step, uh, if you already have turp out, it's turpenoid, turpentine, and you have it open. Sorry, mine is a little gross right now. If you already have turp out because you're painting with it, um, then it's okay to just kind of get the first little swoosh off of there and see what you can, because there's no reason to make your life any harder by having a lot of extra paint just sitting on the outside of the brush. So if you want to get what you can off with the turp as a first step, that's perfectly okay. Um, some people try and approach their entire brush cleaning with just turp, meaning put your brush in the solvent, oh, the solvent removes the oil, oh, we're good. No, don't do that. Um, your brushes will die terrible, horrible deaths, and you will be replacing them all the time. And, um, you know, this is not the, the nicest looking brush, but it's one, it's, it's one of my scrubby brushes, which means that I use it for things that look like this. Um, so it's, it's going to be a little frayed. Uh, it's also a synthetic brush. It's kind of a cheaper one, um, but it's old and I've been taking care of it very well. And it's actually take, still has a very nice filbert shape. Um, it's held up very nicely uh, over the years. And um, I will show you how I clean my brushes so that hopefully yours will stay in just as nice condition because when you have maybe a more expensive brush or a nicer quality fiber like this sable, uh, you really don't want to be just dipping them in turp and leaving them because that's a tremendous way to waste your money and your brushes. So now let's move over to our sink. Here we have our brush and I'm using this handy dandy soup lid. Um, I like these because they're nice, they're disposable, they're exactly the right size and shape for me. Um, if you don't happen to have soup lids on hand, um, I've seen people use tuna cans cleaned out or like the tops of jars. Um, I've also seen people use their hands, like just do this. Don't do that because there are some nasty things in your paints and um, you don't want to just be pushing that into your skin any more than you're already doing probably in the course of your day of painting. Um, you know, we've no need to go out of your way to poison yourself. So uh, the first thing you're going to do is add some oil. I have this big jar here. We have just some regular olive oil you can buy at the store, or this is vegetable oil, Crisco vegetable oil, and we're going to put that right in here. Um, so the thing is, what's in your brush is pigment suspended in an oil, and water isn't going to get rid of oil, so we use another oil to push the oil out. <laughs> um, so what you can do is just kind of put your brush in there and you can see that as the vegetable oil kind of soaks up into the brush fiber there, you're going to leach out the other oil that was in there and kind of substitute one for the other. And then you can kind of scrape like that on the edge and um, you'll get your pigment. You can see it coming out of the brush and then so now we've got some kind of tainted vegetable oil and a slightly cleaner brush. So what I'll do is wipe that oil out. Dirty oily rag. Your hands will probably get really messy while you're doing this. And then I will wipe my brush. 
And then you're going to repeat this process. Again. Put your brush back in. Clean it, clean it, clean it. And I wasn't using this brush very much today. There isn't a lot of oil in it, or paint in it. There's a lot of oil in it right now. Um, and it's not very big. If you use a lot of large brushes or lots of different brushes um, or both, you can expect that this process, the cleaning process at the end of your day is gonna maybe take you quite some time to get all of the, the pigment out of your brush. Um, but it's not something you wanna slack on because especially if your brush is large, when you come back to it, uh, you're gonna find that the entire thing is hard as a rock. And while there are some things you can do to try and bring your brush back if you've accidentally hurt it like that, um, I really don't recommend getting to that point. Uh, so this, this can be a lengthy procedure, but luckily our small brush was pretty clean when we started, so by the second time, uh, our oil is actually not showing any of that reddish brown pigment that we had in here. Um, I think we had Mars Violet, was it? Uh, I don't remember. But uh, there's no pigment showing in our oil, so we're just going to kind of get rid of that and um, wipe our brush one last time. So now we have a brush that is totally saturated with vegetable oil. Now that's a little bit better than having a brush saturated with oil and pigment particles full of heavy metals, but we still don't want to just leave our brush with all this junk in it. So we might ask ourselves now, what removes oil? Well, the answer is dishwashing liquid. <laughs> so now we have a fresh soup lid and uh, we're just gonna put a little bit of Dawn right in there and uh, you'll have to forgive me my my sink is broken so we just have a little bit of water you know what normally I would stick my brush under the tap but uh, I'm just gonna dip it in that what is now a paint cup and not a drinking cup any longer <laughs> and so we have a little bit of water sitting on our brush. You can see it's not going anywhere because oil and water don't mix. But that's what the Dawn is here for. So you can really just kinda, and we just added a little water to help the Dawn get all nice and bubbly. Uh, it works without, but just kinda facilitates the cleaning. So you can just swoosh this around and sometimes at this point in your brush washing procedure you may notice that your blue or green or whatever your preferred scent of dishwashing detergent or fluid or not detergent, um, whatever your Dawn color is might start to have other colors in it, especially if you scrape on the sides here. If that happens, there's still pigment in your brush and you need to go back to the vegetable oil phase and do that until that doesn't happen anymore. But our brush today is very clean, so we really don't need to do this very long at all. This is more than we really need. And you can see we've now worked lots of Dawn in. Now, normally I should have wash my hand with Dawn first because I have vegetable oil all over it. Um, but my sink is broken right now, so I'm just going to show you this. On the back of my hand, we have nice, clean, Dawn-covered brush. So I've stepped away and um, cleaned this with water, um, just washed out the Dawn. Um, unfortunately, my sink right here is having a, a bit of a moment, so um, I had to go find another one. Sorry about that. But uh, hopefully we can all understand that we can, we can rinse brushes with water 
and get the soap out of them. And now we have a nice clean dry brush. You can just um, use a, a towel to pat the, the brush dry and then gently reshape with your fingers um, just the, the shape of, of the brush, uh, this filbert or square or round or whatever. Just bring it to a, a tip and leave it in a, in a nice way to dry um, in its own shape. And uh, one other thing that you can do um, after, after you've finished with all of the cleaning and your brush is ready to uh, wait for, for your next painting session is uh, add a conditioning element. There, there are a couple brush cleaners out there that they sell um, that you can just kind of put into the brush when you're going to leave it. Um, especially if the brush is larger and there might be still some pigment way deep in there that you're just really not going to ever effectively get to all the way 100%. Um, it can be nice to put a little um, brush conditioner in there and sometimes wrap it in a towel. Uh, like a paper towel will work just that as it's drying it's going to keep its shape and it holds the conditioner in and um, that can just help it stay um, youthful and uh, nice a little bit longer especially for those larger thicker brushes. Um, one thing that I've always found worked for me was using hand soap. I know that sounds weird but just like the normal foam dispenser hand soap you can just put a little bit right in the tip like just a tiny tiny little bit just kind of do like that put it in. I don't have any right now but like you would do like that and just leave it just just like that and um, they won't hurt your brush. Um, they put conditioners in those soaps for your skin and um, it'll do the same thing for the fibers won't hurt them um, and you don't need to totally optional but um, it, it can be a nice thing to do if you have a, a larger brush for, for something like this. I wouldn't say that it's necessary. Uh, and if you don't want to buy one of those um, brush conditioners or cleaners that you can find at uh, fine establishments everywhere. All right. Well, that is all that we have on cleaning brushes for today. Uh, make sure to like this video and subscribe to this channel for more content like this. Also, share this video with your friends so that they can keep their art supplies nice for longer as well because um, everyone likes not having to buy more brushes all the time. I know I do. Um, make sure to click through on the links in the video description um, to our affiliates and uh, check out their stuff on Amazon. It really helps out this channel. Um, also, there's going to be a link to my website, which is majeskew.com, and that's it for today. Thanks for watching.